Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Caroline Smits. My name is Caroline and I live in Scotland with my husband Ben and my dog Fela. I am originally Danish but I've lived in Scotland now for nine years which is kind of crazy. Um, I am waiting for the dog to come back any minute um, so hopefully very soon you should see the little fluffster coming jumping in here um, I'm filming in a different spot today. This is our main bedroom. I usually film in the second bedroom because it's south facing so I get better light but we've had that time of year where there's no good light anywhere. Um, it's been a little while and you might notice a slight change which is that I have chopped off all my hair um, before going to the hairdresser when I was sat down my hair touched the top of my thighs and it certainly does not anymore so it feels like um I feel like I, I thought it was going to be a bigger change than it felt felt when it actually happened and I've actually quite enjoyed having shorter hair um this Friday I'm going in to have it um coloured so I'll get some kind of highlights and lowlights and make the colour a little bit more interesting but um so far I'm, I'm really loving how much thicker it looks um, and obviously it has been a long time and I feel really rusty and I've kept making excuses not to film and today is the first day where I feel like I could quickly bash out a 30 minute episode without it being a big deal and um, I seem to have caught a cold. So I will be a little bit sniffly, you know, um, maybe a few breaks as I go blowing my nose and my nose might turn redder throughout the episode and if I sound a little bit nasally that's why. Um, but hopefully you can um, live with it. Since it's been a long time, I'm also hoping that I can just be like efficient in getting through stuff today. So I'm just going to start out by basically chronologically walk you through um, my finished objects since the last episode. The first finished object is one that I did show you I was working on last time and which once I have taken... Um, to sort of like try on videos um I will have to give another wash because I wore this I reckon I've worn it on a walk um maybe it's slightly clearing I might try hanging outside basically I think I wore it one day when the weather maybe wasn't quite cold enough to wear something as thick as this and it just had that kind of like it smelled of sweat essentially but anyway this is the Elizabeth blouse um, by Petite Knit, which is essentially you start off um, knitting the colour, um, do the sort of double knit down here, and then it's basically just a raglan sweater um, finished off with rib. I decided to do Italian bind off for this um, because that's my favourite. Um, it does suggest tubular bind off, so essentially you do like, you step, you know, you do some double knitting before you do the bind off and it gives like a chunkier look to the rib but mine always looked terrible and so I just went for standard one. I knitted this in um, Madeleine Tosh Merino Light and I put the colour below but it's so old I don't think you can get that exact colour anymore and then um, my my hair was to Capard um, Kid Seater in Mink, that's what it was called, Mink. That's kind of it. I don't know how much there is to talk about. I found the knit itself fairly straightforward. It it wasn't overly difficult because it is literally just, you know, like once you kind of wrap your head around um, doing the like, basically you cast on like this was a toe. That's how you knit the top. That took a little bit to get used to. I've never done like double knitting before like this. So that took a little bit but once you're kind of through that it's a very straightforward knit and um everything I kind of hoped it would be in my wardrobe it's already turned out to be you know you just kind of throw it on with a pair of jeans on the weekends when you're going to shop and you still look good together I want it to work with like big um like not big with like wide leg trousers for example and it kind of gives that like effortless kind of look and as much as Dion is hand dyed, I think it's it's not any major, major pulling, um, which I'm quite happy about. So yeah, all in all, um, I've actually enjoyed it so much. I could 
almost be tempted to knit another one. So that's the first knit and I finished that quite a long time ago. I maybe finished it in July. Um, and then my lovely friend Sophie had um, a test, knit a test knitting core and it was one of those knits that you sort of see and you just want it. Um, and there isn't maybe much rhyme or reason to like why you want it, but you're just desperate to sort of knit it. And that's what this was for me. So this is the um, Crescendo camisole um, designed by the Knit Pearl Girl. Um, and I test knitted this for her back in end of July. So the pattern is already out. Um, the problem was that like I saw the camisole itself and wanted to knit it, but I didn't actually have any perfect yarn in my stash for it. So um, I decided to hold two strands of some hand dyed merino from a dyer called Ria Yarns, um, who unfortunately no longer dyes um, yarn. And that had been in my stash for coming up two years, I think. So um, not bad to get rid of it. Um, but yeah, um, I probably think it would have been better to knit in the sort of like suggested yarn, but I wasn't keen, there's so many dog hairs on this. I'm buying yarn for this, so that's what I used and you can kind of see it here. No, no, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, in the pattern, excuse me, oh, little sneeze. Um, in the pattern, she gives directions for how you can do these kind of straps, but she also has a form of double knitted straps that would obviously cover bra because at least for me, unless you went strapless, you would basically have to like not wear a bra with this. Um, so I went for that one and then I decided on the back you have like um, a fastening and I just knitted like an eye cord bow. Um, in Sophie's original ones I think she has like a little button. Um, I don't think my I don't think my finish on this is as neat as it could have been. Um, but hey ho. And obviously I'm not sure I really thought through knitting something in two strands of merino for a top that you have to wear braless but I'm sure I'll get somewhere out of it once it kind of gets warmer again. I feel like just wearing this with a pair of shorts in summertime would actually work quite well in Scotland and still be something I could you know yeah just like kind of wear on that kind of thing. I also thought it could be cute with maybe a bikini top underneath with the, the thin straps um, but I definitely think the way I've sewn on these eye cords isn't the best. Um, but that's not really Sophie's fault and the pattern was fairly easy um, to figure out and if you are new to like knitting lace I think this kind of lace is very easy and I should say if you like the lace but maybe you don't want a camisole Sophie does have both um, a sweater and a t-shirt format of this pattern and I think I think the Crescendo comes both in a light sweater version and in a heavy sweater version. So there's plenty to, to choose from and I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So that's my second finish. Now, the third thing I finished, um, so I finished that and then Ben and I actually went on a belated honeymoon to um, Thailand and we went away for nine days and um, absolutely loved Thailand um, but before I left that basically didn't have time to dry with me finishing it so I left that to dry um, while we were away and obviously we were going to Thailand and um, Thailand in August is actually um, it's the rainy season um, we had very very little rain apparently we had like unbelievably little rain for August like last year um, all the guides we were kind of talking to, they said the last last August, it was like a mud bath, like it just didn't stop raining. Um, but we only had, I think we saw rain twice in the nine days we were there, so it really wasn't bad. Um, but it's, you know, humid, it's like 30, you know, over 30 degrees each day. Um, I could basically not be outside middle of the day because you just burn so quickly, the UV is very, very high. Um, so, so I kind of knew there would be um, some downtime where we'd maybe just be reading books or um, just chilling. Um, so I thought a lot about what kind of knitting I would take because I didn't, 
I'd reached a point on what I'm currently wearing that that was too big to take. Like you're not going to knit on a three strand my hair cardigan with the body done in 30 degrees C, or at least I'm not. And I didn't have anything else cast on. So what I decided to do was to bring sock yarn because socks are great in the sense, especially if you're knitting fingering weight, they, you don't actually have to take a lot of yarn to get a lot of knitting time. And I also thought if I then don't cast anything on, it's not like I've brought, you know, sweaters quantities worth of yarn and not knitted it. So I brought sock yarn and I brought um, two different kinds, but um, the one I cast on in Thailand um, have become these socks and I didn't bring my sock blockers. Um, so they look a bit lame, don't they? But um, this yarn is um, hand dyed by a gardener's cottage. I'll put the actual dyer name below. Um, but the the sort of the main part of the foot is hand dyed by her. And then for the contrasting colour, I used a veta in red squirrel, which I have left had left from a different project. The pattern is um, Hermione's everyday socks. Um, but I made a few adjustments. So um, I knitted the ribbing just as described and um, Hermione's everyday socks is a free Ravelry pattern and it just includes um, like a very simple pattern um, using knits and pearls. Very, very easy to memorize, very, very easy to knit, but kind of gives a bit of texture. Um, the original pattern has a um, like a gusset, flapping gusset, whatever it's called, like a different type of type of heel. And um, basically, I got to the heel just as we came home, um, so I'd finished like this much on one sock in a nine days holiday, and that was all the knitting I had done. So it really wasn't very much. But then I got to the heel, and I just decided I wanted to do a short row heel. Now I asked for recommendations for a short row heel. And it seems the shadow wrap heel was came really highly recommended. And I looked at that on, we'd come back on the Wednesday in the morning after flying, you know, traveling for essentially 24 hours. And it was like Thursday morning and the day after, and I was very jet lagged. I don't think I realized just how jet lagged I was. Um, on a Friday, I had to go in for a work event and I literally got car sick driving myself, which has never happened before. And I spent all day at that work event essentially feeling drunk. So I don't know who I thought I was, but let me tell you, the shadow wrap heel made no sense to me. Like I tried, I really tried. I looked at it, I tried to figure it out. My brain could just not wrap it head, its head around the way you do the wraps in the shadow wrap. And by the end of it, I was like, you know what? It's just a pair of bloody socks. Like, I can live with just a normal short row heel. So I basically just found a guide. I think it was from Nimble Needles. I basically just found a guide on how to do a short row heel. And then I just did it. Now in a traditional short row heel, you will basically, once you've done the like top half of the heel, you knit one full round to knit through all the double stitches you've made. Now I didn't want the contrast color to go up on the foot. So I broke the yarn and then knitted the other half so that's why there's not like a line across if you've ever knitted a short row heel and I'm sure there would have been much neater nicer ways to do it but I couldn't think of it so I just decided to make it work however I could and weaving in ends is not that bad and with the short row heels you most of the time do get little gaps right here so having ends to sew it up wasn't too bad for the sort of end of the sock I just realized I might run out of yarn so um, I started on the toe extra early. Now, I feel like it looks a lot worse when I hold it up, but I have quite small but wide feet. <laughs> Feels weird to say on the internet. Um, so when I when I wear them, you know, this part actually stretches out a lot further and it looks less intense. Yeah, it'll make up your own mind what this very distinctive tip looks like. Um, but yeah, so, um, you also notice another change I did was that I did an anatomical toe, um, essentially meaning that I tried on the sock and started decreasing. So this would fit my right foot. So I started decreasing on this side as it hit my little toe. And then um, once I kind of got to like basically where close to the end of my big toe, I started 
um, decreasing much more rapidly. Now I do have roping toes, so my second toe is bigger than my first toe. So actually this almost being, having from um, kitchen a stitch a little bit of a tip is fine for me. Um, and it doesn't look very pretty, but actually it feels quite good when I've tried them on. I haven't worn them yet because I wanted to keep them clean for the podcast, but I will soon. Um, and then I did the, the exact same on the second toe. I did manage to lose all sorts of stitches for the heel, so I kind of budged it because they're socks and I just do not care that much. All of my changes I have also added um, to Ravelry. Um, so if you want to read how I did my anatomical toe, um, you can read it there, but I added uh, notes particularly for this project. Now that that was done, um, it was time to finish. Um, the long standing, actually, it had been cast on since March, it turns out, because um, Ravelry told me. And um, you can see it is now finished. Um, this is the Waffle Cardigan by Knitting with Olive. I knitted this in three strands of Drops Kid Silk in the colour Malva. And it has been a journey. That's why it's been cast on since March. It's kind of been a project that I picked up when I kind of had the headspace for it and then didn't work on it when I didn't and let other projects come in around it. That's not uncommon for me to have, like I'm a two project kind of person. Um, at the moment I just have one project on and it it, it really irritates me and makes me a little bit stressed actually um, because I like an overlap between my two projects and I like if I get tired of one project I can work on another one. Um, I like having, you know, one simple, one harder, that kind of thing. So I'm not a monogamous knitter, but I am a two project knitter and that's it. So often this has been either the second project or the forgotten third project. I am a finisher though. I very rarely have whip saw, like if I have a whip I don't intend on finishing, I do rip it out. Um, so currently I have only one whip, literally one whip. I have no hidden, you know, forgotten about whips anymore. Anyway, my point being that especially the start of this was hard. I did not understand the pattern and I didn't find it very clear. Um, so I found the start and basically off the raglan really, really hard. And I've kind of just made up my own way of doing the button band, um, especially with the placement of the buttons because I didn't find that was very clear in the pattern, like the frequency you should place button bands. Um, and at the very tail end, if you look at the pattern photos, it kind of looks like you're placing a button kind of out of like the same kind of frequency you've done throughout the rest of the cardigan. And I didn't like that. So again, just kind of made up my mo my own. Once I reached the body ribbing, um, everything bound off with Italian bind off, of course, both the um, body and the sleeves. And um, before I left for Thailand, I was essentially doing the Italian bind off, which was quite long, so it did take a while. Um, but once that was done, it was just, I just had to do the sleeves and actually the sleeves weren't that bad. Um, the, the lace is incredibly repetitive in a good way. It's one of those that you absolutely do not need to look at a chart. And once you've kind of figured out, once I was past the raglan, and I, I didn't look at the chart ever again. So the sleeves were kind of easy in the sense that like once you know the lace pattern, it's not hard lace to do either. Um, so the sleeves were actually quite fast. I think the first sleeve took me about a week of not particularly frequent knitting. And the second one took a few days, um, which I'm quite happy with. As I said, it's knitted in Jobs Kid Silk and I don't love it. I don't hate it. Um, but I don't think I love it enough to buy it again. It doesn't, um, it doesn't feel overly soft on my arms, but I have also very deliberately not knitted something where it's on my neck, um, because I do think, I do think I'd find it itchy. So, um, that's why a cardigan, I feel like was a good choice for this. Um, but yeah, I just don't think I love it enough. Like if I want to knit with my hair, I'd rather buy my hair that I really like by now. Um, but it's, it's definitely gone fluffier. I wasn't particularly impressed that I did find a knot in it and I personally think that lots of knots in yarn is something that would make me not choose a brand again. You know, you use 10 balls of yarn for a sweater and you find one, that's kind of okay, but I found several in the Jobs Kid Silk and yeah, I just hate it because you can't knit in um, the knot so you kind of have to break the yarn and then the small ends to weave in. Um, I did engage swatch for this. And I think the, the fit is fine. It does close if you want it to. Um, and obviously this 
like lace pattern is incredibly stretchy so if I ever needed it to be like three sizes bigger I could probably block it a lot more aggressively than I have um but to be honest I thought if I can fit into a smaller size I would rather knit a smaller size so that was kind of what was behind my choice of knitting a size medium which feels kind of brave but I think my thoughts were that often I knit looser than the intended gauge so I was like I would rather knit slightly small in case my gauge turns out massive but I don't actually think it has um I think it all in all looks quite proportional and yeah I'm glad it's done I do have a lot of yarn left over I think I have about five balls left of this which I don't know what I'm gonna do with um but I'm gonna probably think of, figure something out because my hair is definitely the yarn type in my stash that's building up the most just because I just find it's always what I have left over. I always have a ball and a ball and a half and, you know, it just adds up really quickly. And then for projects like this where I had so much left over, um, it's a lot. So if you have any good ideas to using up lots of my hair, let me know. For someone who doesn't finish stuff very fast, I feel like for finished projects is pretty good. <laughs> so currently I only have one project on my needles. I've been sort of thinking about what I want to knit um, next. And I think I know, so I'll, I'll talk you through my plans in a minute. Um, but currently I'm knitting the second sock of a pair of socks. This was actually the other sock yarn I brought with me to Thailand. Um, so you can see um, I've done the heel on this and I'm now on the foot on sock two. And this is the first sock. Um, this is the Morrison socks by a lady called Jenny Blumenstein, I think. I've knit this pair already and I dubbed this out because these are like comfy comfy home socks um, so they've also stretched a lot more but that's what my original pair looks like. Um, I think I washed the these the first time on a sock blocker and I do just think it stretches them out so much more so I think I've just decided to not block my socks on a sock blocker anymore even though obviously it opens up everything much nicer. Um, the main strand of both of these socks is actually the same. So it's the Anfield Farm and yeah, Anfield Farm, Havangoras, and this is um this particular colour is 50% mohair, 50% Shetland. Um I think this one was 75% mohair, 25% Shetland or something. It was a different composition. I think it was basically like a newer a newer blend, whereas this is a slightly older blend, which is why it has more Shetland. Um, so that's the main strand. And then my second strand is actually I had, uh, when I very first started knitting, I sold this like one strand um, my hair sweater uh, that needed, you know, like five balls of random colours. And I decided that I wanted to knit it never knitted it um but I still had the yarn I bought way way back um and one of them was a bright red and so um I realized it matched the color this color is called passion by the way um I realized it matched the color of this yarn perfectly um so I decided to knit it in these socks because um the thing with like non-superwash socks like sock yarns like or like is that you will start to get it's kind of like almost felting on the inside of the sock and I am conscious that if you look at sort of are you shocked? oh Fela oh Fela you're covered in mud and now mummy's clean sheets are covered in mud as well are you for real? well that's Fela home anyway um and I think you can start to see that like, um, oh, you can actually really see it right there, that I'm starting to, to wear through the yarn on the sole. Actually, I'm really starting to wear through. I didn't realise it was quite that bad. Um, so I thought I would try to reinforce it with um, some of my hair. And also that should make the gauge a little bit tighter, which hopefully um, will also help make it a little bit less likely to wear through. These socks are home socks for me. They're not wearing, you know, wearing boots wear out. They're like 
you know, sitting on the sofa, watching telly or like chilling in bed or working from home at my desk kind of socks. Um, and clearly I should be more like that because I'm definitely going to wear through those socks any minute now. Um, so that's kind of what these have become. I am certain I'm going to run out of yarn because this is all I have left. And as you can tell, there's still quite a lot of sock to finish. So I don't think this will be enough. If I do run out of yarn, I will probably use whatever little bit I have left over from these. Because I know there's some left over because um, I did an extra cable on the foot. Um, because those ones are a little bit short. Um, so I did another cable. And um, yeah, I just didn't measure the yarn. So I'll just use whatever's left over from there. I have some way hair that sort of matches. Um, so it should be okay. So yes, if that happens, it's a pair of home socks. I do not care enough. I do quite enjoy this pattern. It's easy to knit. Um, the only major change I did is that I did another short row heel. Um, same concept as on Hermione's everyday socks. Um, the original socks actually come with this kind of gusset flat type heel and I couldn't make the numbers fit and then I just got so frustrated that I gave up, ripped it out, did a hoikily poikily heel which didn't exactly work because um, with a short row heel um, you have to be on the right, like you start on the right side, whereas for this heel you started on the wrong side. Um, so on the first sock, I just basically did a terrible turn. Basically, I, I knitted through a double stitch and then turned so I was on the right side because I'd ripped it all out. Um, but on the second sock, so on this sock, obviously it was like two different ribbed panels and um, I wanted them to match on the two socks. So I just switched around so that I would start like the the start of the round would be on the side that the heel was on. So essentially starting like on this side, working this way around instead of working this way around. I'm not sure that made sense, um, but it was quite easy and I'm glad they're done. And I feel like that's enough about socks. I've spoken way too much about socks for someone it's not even that sort of crazy. The next thing um, I'm going to be working on, I reckon, I'm almost decided this is going to be my cast on, is it's going to be knit in this yarn. Um, so this is Phil Colonna Peruvian Highland Wool and uh, Phil Colonna Telia. I bought this from the very, very long time ago. Um, I don't think we'd moved. So it might be again almost two years ago. And basically it was one of those typical ones. I think she had marzipan in stock or there was something. Basically it was around a period if you watched a podcast for a long time, I bought it while podcasting. I went, basically went through a period where I bought so much yarn and never had time to work through it and this is one of those yarns that have now been in my stash for ages and um something i think i've kind of discovered is like how much my taste has changed i would not pick this color anymore um it's a very very cool tone brown and i'm not sure it does much for my coloring however i do have it i don't mind it and i think it's going to be great when worked up in a project I already started a project at some point. Um, was it the, it was called the oversized seasoned cardigan, but for life of me, I can't remember if it was from Osetta or it was some kind of North American designer and the pattern and I just did not see eye to eye. Um, so I ripped that out um, and then it's just been lying in my stash. I actually thought this was gonna be a zipper sweater and then I just kind of got lazy I feel like a zipper sweater, I don't know, I can't decide if I'm willing to knit one or I just want to buy a zipper sweater. So instead I decided that I am still on a cardigan kick because it just works so much better in my wardrobe. I have so many sweaters already, I do not need any more sweaters. So this is going to become a jacket number one by my favourite things knitwear. 
I settled on that because it had oversized shoulders, it had um, a double knit button band which I think looks nicer and I kind of wanted as I said that kind of oversized fit because that's very fashionable it seems to me and I wanted something a bit like this cardigan which I've already worn to work but I've also worn in a home office like I'm really into making pieces I can dress up and down that's really a part of my selection criteria and I already think I can already see how jacket number one could you know be worn literally with the exact same outfit I'm wearing today with you know a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt yesterday I wore this cardigan with a longer t-shirt and a pair of leggings like I think jacket number one will be even better for that and um yeah for work you know you could wear it with a nice pair of like work trousers and a sort of dressy top you could wear it on top of a white shirt to look a little bit more dressy yeah I just think it'll be really versatile and I also picked it because sweater number 18 which is the sweater version of jacket number one I have worn so much I always feel comfortable and confident when I wear my sweater number 18 so that's my choice and that's um I have the swatch ready I am one stitch too tight in my swatch gauge and most of the time for me that means I will probably knit looser once I actually get going so I'm fine to kind of start even with a slightly tighter gauge because as I mentioned I always knit looser um, once I actually start knitting and I kind of relax. Um, I think I need tighter on gauge swatches because you're always resetting every row and that kind of reminds me to tighten things up. Another benefit of jacket number one is that because it does have ever so slight texture I um like any rowing out won't be as obvious so that's my current plan um I've been on an R-ing. um it's been really interesting to me I've kind of been like desperate to knit something but not certain what I'm going to knit and I'm still toying around with what my second project is going to be when the socks are done I have bought some yarn which I'm going to show you just a sec this is what I've bought I don't know if you can guess what this is for. This is Drops Merino Extra Fine. I will leave the actual colour name down below. It's the colour 50. It's this um, like sandy colour. Um, it's probably called like light beige or you know that kind of thing. Um, I bought it from Wool Warehouse which is why it's in this bag and the plan is for this to become a sweet shop blanket. So if anything that's like left over in my stash, like the yarn I have left over from this or the yarn I have left over from this, all of those, my plan is that they can go in the Sweet Shop Blanket, um, which is a pattern by my lovely friend Penrose Knits. And I've been 100% influenced to fall in love with that blanket and buy yarn. And with that order, I also bought some sock yarn. And I feel like we're starting to come to the end of it. I think I'm a little bit under the weather. Um, I can definitely feel it. My whole head just feels a bit heavy. Um, it's also close to lunchtime. So um, towards the end, I can start to feel the like, you know, you start to be like, not as clear spoken. Um, so you will have to excuse that. But um, I recently, after a little break, finally posted some pictures on Instagram. And I had a few people ask if I was coming back to podcast and I've been making, not been making excuses. I've had all sorts of reasons why I've not been back. First of all, I have no knitting mojo in summer. Like it doesn't completely disappear, but I can go days without knitting or days where I knit very, very little. Um, for my birthday, Ben got me a Kindle that's backlit. And that means I can now read when he goes to sleep, which works really really well for me because sometimes if I'm really anxious or stressed I can struggle to like find peace and then in the past I would just be like tossing and turning keeping both of us up or I would go next door and like watch something on the iPad till way too late and then not get proper sleep and the Kindle kind of allows me to read so I've been reading loads. I have finished the first three books of A Court of Thorns and Roses, um, or Akatar, which is obviously what everyone's obsessed with. Um, it was good. Um, 
get through the first book, I would say, I think it gets better from the first book. Um, and I've really been enjoying that. Um, been enjoying reading. I also read um, some other book series and um, for the first time in what feels like forever, I've actually like completely smashed my reading challenge on Goodreads. So that's been nice. Um, maybe I'll leave my Goodreads in the description box um, and you can add me as friends if you'd like. It's always nice to kind of see what people you follow, what they've been reading. So um, I'd be happy to connect on there. So that's one reason why it's been so long. And then the second reason is work has been absolutely crazy. And to be honest, I don't actually really have the time to film today, but I just desperately wanted to do it. Um, but it has been causing me um, a lot of stress and um, I have just, yeah, just been so tired when I've come back that I haven't really wanted to do much um yeah um i'm hoping things will quiet it like quiet quiet down a little bit on my work um on the work front for the next wee while because there was definitely a point in summer where i thought it was going to burn out which um i would really like to avoid <laughs> so um i'm trying to be good to myself and as part of that i'm also trying to have my priorities straight and um as much as I love knitting Instagram and uh, knitting podcasts and all of those things, I also had to admit that something had to give um, when it felt like there was too few hours in a day. And social media always seems like a good place to just take a step back um, just get through what you can. Um, and instead I've focused on things that I can control and that makes me feel better. And a major one for me is even something as simple as like staying on top of cleaning and tidying the house because it's a much nicer place to be. Um, so all of that's been kind of going on. And um, yeah, over the summer, I've been going through the usual, like the one, the stuff I talked about in the last podcast about the Elizabeth blouse that, um, about the whole like identity crisis still continuing. I'm still trying to figure out what Caroline, 28 years old, what kind of person she is, um, what she likes. And not, I feel like an identity crisis sounds like it's negative or unpleasant. And I don't actually think it's been, but it's just um, thought consuming, I guess. And I feel like that's most of it. Besides that, I've been busy with the dog. We went to Thailand, loved it. We went to um, Phuket, would recommend if you've never been. If you are looking for honeymoon destination, Thailand gets like my highest recommendations. It's the perfect place to chill, to go out for nice food, um, but there's loads to see, loads of culture to experience. And um, coming from the UK, it also felt pretty reasonable money-wise to stay. So you eat very well for not that much money, which was really nice. Um, I'd love to go back to Thailand. Um, I have been busy with the dog, Fela, uh, and I have been competing in Hoopers. Um, which I've done a few times. Um, she just had her first proper show and I was so proud of her. She did so well. Um, so that's been taking up more of my time and I reckon during winter I'll have to knit some Hoopers appropriate warming accessories because my God, is it getting cold? Um, autumn has fully hit Scotland. We had a little bit of an Indian summer, but it's all gone. Um, so now it's just absolutely freezing. Oh. Another sneeze is coming. So yeah, I have recently made sure my Ravelry stash is all up to date. Um, so um, by the end of the year, I'd like to give you an update on how much I've actually managed to work through this year. Um, but um, I'm still committed to that. And um, I have a few ideas for how I'm gonna work through some of my stash. So alongside the sort of project um, the full project's worth quantities. I'm, I'm still going to work through some of that. And getting through the sock yarn is like a really good good start, I think. So, yeah. Um, but it's kind of hard when you then, like, your mojo returns with a vengeance and you don't even know where to start. And that's all I'm going to talk about. Dog has come to say, Mummy, you need to be quiet soon um, because I need to nap and I can't watch you and nap at the same time. Um, so thank you so, so much for watching. 
I would love to know what you've been up to, what's on your mind, and I will see you all soon. Bye. Yes, she's so sweet. Feels so sweet. But she's is so muddy. She's so muddy. She's so muddy. Muddy, muddy, muddy.